Hey folks, forgive my excitement, but this is the first time Shadaz and I have been out together since lockdown, and we're here today in Bista for a special classic car show. So what's this all about, Shazad? Well, we're socially distanced we because are. we are still in a COVID-aware situation, but we are here at the Classic Car Driving Weekend at the Bista Heritage Centre. It's my first time here, so I'm really excited about it. The weather's fantastic, isn't it? The weather is absolutely great, and it's like the heavens have come out to us and said, this is the time for classic cars. So we've just got a beautiful mecca of wonderful cars to see today. There's proper high-octane metal here, and I'm in search of some muscle cars. You go for muscle cars, I'll go for thoroughbreds. See you later. So I told Kevin I was going to look for muscle cars, and when it comes to muscle cars, nothing epitomizes them more than Ford Mustangs. I absolutely adore them. And I found Steve, who's the editor of the club magazine for the, what is it, the Mustang Owners Club of Great Britain? That's correct. That's and the amazing. magazine's called Roundup. Roundup magazine. You not only are the editor, but you own this amazing car behind you, which to me is one of my favorite Mustangs. It's a Roush Mustang. Tell people what is a Roush Mustang. Roush Mustang is a um, normal Mustang taken by Roush and then redesigned, reconfigured, and improved on the muscle car that Ford's renowned for. Um, this particular one, say stage two, is just short of a supercharger. So that's the only thing that's different from the different stages. They go, as you know, they go one, two, and three. Three being the supercharger, one just being the body kit, and that's got the body kit, upgraded suspension, and slightly tweaked mechanics on the uh, manifolds and things to make it just a little bit feasible, but it's 420, three horsepower. It's got the Roush loud exhaust <laughs> on it, which wakes the neighbours up every time you go out at 4.30 in the morning to get to an event like this. What about the club? Tell me about the club. How many members and when did you start this? Right, the club's got 2,000 members and we actually started 41 years ago this year. Now, the club started off um, with just two friends meeting up at Santa Pod, who both own Mustangs. Uh, they arranged to meet at a pub on a Friday uh, and then it's grown from there. And now we've got members all over the UK as well as all over the world. And when you come to events like this, what's the reaction that you get to Mustangs? Mustangs have been probably the most featured car in movies and TV shows. Do a lot of people equate to it that way? They do, and a lot of people always expect to see the bullet on the stand. Uh, and, and some of the modern owners say to us, can I bring my car? I say, of course you can, because it's an iconic car. So hence why we've got some newer shaped models and right-hand drive ones to so say, Mustang owns Club of Great Britain is fully inclusive. We accept anyone that's got a Mustang or just likes Mustangs. Talking of which, I see a Camaro over there. Yes, we do. He used to own a Mustang, um, and that belongs to Andy. He runs the Essex meetings for us. Um, and as I say, we accept anyone in. If they love Mustangs, then they can join our club and get involved with the club. We're not, you need to own a Mustang to be part of the club. Uh, it's not our scene. That is awesome. It sounds like I need to join up again. I'm going to go do that. Let's see what Kevin has found. So while Shazad's gone off in search of muscle cars, I'm looking for real thoroughbreds. And as soon as I got here, I saw BMW Alpinas, which I absolutely love. And I'm fortunate enough to have met Norman Burnham from the BMW Car Club, Great Britain. So that's the official BMW club, isn't it, Norman? Yeah, we are the official club and the only official club of BMW UK Limited. Yeah. Right, and how long has the club been going? I think from it's 1952 or 53, and we have about 5,000 paid up members uh, within the UK and Ireland. And if you don't know about BMW Alpinas, what can you tell us about them, Norman? Alpina has manufacturing status from the uh, German government uh, since 1983, and uh, it now is a, a recognized um, exclusive car manufacturer in its own right. Come on, who doesn't love BMWs? And Alpinas are rather special. But to me, car events are as much about the people you meet as they are about the cars. This is a great show. I'm finding a lot of interesting people here. And in fact, I have found the man. This is Andy Entwistle, who is the CEO of the British Murder Show. So the Murder Show, obvious, for obvious reasons, couldn't go ahead this year. This was supposed to be its relaunch, its inaugural uh, event. But it is definitely going ahead next year? Absolutely, 100%. 19th to 22nd of August um, at Farnborough, same place. We're branding ourselves as more than just a motor show. So 
the old motor shows where it was static cars and, and, and in recent years a lot of them you can't even get close to them you, you've got the wides in front and you just see a car in the distance that's not what we're about we're about putting people in cars so we want you to get in the car feel the car we've got test drives we've got uh, a live arena going on we've got a t um, passenger rides in caterums and things like that we've just got a whole lot more going on than just static cars there's going to be a lot of fun stuff, right? I mean, we're standing next to this bright yellow Citroen 2CV, and I believe this is a special edition to do with the Bond franchise? It is, and, and you're right. So this was released by Citroen to celebrate the film for your eyes only. There's only a handful of these in the world now. Uh, and they, they took a yellow one, they put the 007 stickers and the bullet holes in it. And we're going to have a lot of stuff just like this. It's a massive variety of cars. It's not just your, your normal new car. It's a whole variety of fun. I'll tell you what, I am so pumped for the show. I was pumped this year, so I'm a little bit disappointed, but I just can't wait for next year. It's going to be amazing. It really is. Now I'm with Peter Geek, who is chairman of the Gay Classic Car Group. Can you tell us a little bit about it? So the, the car was set up in 1998, um, 1,200 members are currently, and it grew very rapidly in the last 10 years. Um, I'm its third chairman now, um, and you know, looking to expand it and grow it in general. I mean, it's very much a fellowship organisation which loves cars. So we are completely cross-sector in cars and marks and, ne and nature types of vehicles. Your car, Peter, is the Integrale Evo 1. Well, there's always a different story associated with each one. So tell us something that's different about yours. It's a, uh, a 92 car, and I bought it in 96, and I used it for my run around for about 10 years, and then I had it completely restored. I mean, I've done a lot of internal strengthening to the chassis, right. so it sits the power down more effectively. So I've done like, quite a lot of things to make it that bit sweeter to drive. Yes, and you've got some beautiful cars here, yeah. so uh, let's hope you all enjoy the day, and thank you very much for talking to us. Pleasure. Hey guys, I'm here with Ian Cook, who is the best car artist in the world. I've been following him for quite a long time. We've met a couple of times before. We have, certainly. But what's happened? You know, normally when I see you, you have a massive setup with remote control cars and all this, yeah. and now you're in a tiny little car. What's going on here? <laughs> COVID happened. Um, and the idea is it's mobile, that I can close the doors, everything is either yeah. attached to it, is contained within the car, and I can literally drive away from a, from a vent. <laughs> Yeah, I've had this car for ten, yeah, for 10 years. It's probably worth nothing more than scrap value, really. <laughs> other than that it's quite cool with a wrap on it. So is this the thing now? Is this going to be you at events? Or are we going to go back to that big display that you used to do? Obviously, large events aren't, you know, it's kind of are they going to happen with localised lockdowns and whatever. I mean, it's amazing this event's happened. It's, it's super to be back out. As you know, I've been doing continuous car drawings. So define we, continuous car. So once I put the pen down, I don't lift from that piece of paper. So the initial outline, so I'm going to start doing a Corvette here, that whole outline is done without lifting the pen. So once the pen is down, the entire outline of the car is drawn, drawn in one continuous line. Um, so I don't lift the pen. So I'm looking at the image on the iPad up here. So I just kind of start but yeah, like a Corvette like it's such an iconic car. You can kind of have fun with it. Do a lot of looking and it's a bit like a nodding dog. You kind of nod up and down. That's what car designers like doing, it's like making big wheels. And, uh, and this one has got particularly big, uh, big rims on this uh, Corvette. I think this is awesome. Chevrolet will be so proud of what you've done with this car. You've given it a whole new lease of life and I'm really looking forward to seeing this at more events. Ian. Thanks so much for talking to us. Thank you. And if you want to see more of Ian's work, check him out at popbangcolor.com. Norman's got a beautiful Alpina B7. It's one of the nicest I've ever seen. Please tell us something about this car, Norman. This model is an E65 uh, Alpina B7. It's a 4.4 V8 supercharged uh, vehicle. Um, it's totally in original condition as supplied by Sitna. There were 11 of them made for E65s for the UK, of which we believe seven remain. The 7 Series uh, Alpina is actually a lot more powerful than the standard car. 
it's exceptionally more powerful, but it combines that comfort and luxury to give maximum handling speed. Now it looks like it's showroom fresh, but do you use it? Absolutely, I use it. So it done just over 50,000 miles when I've got it. I've driven 70,000 miles okay. in the car. I've been over Europe and many other places and to many, many shows like this. Isn't it actually great to hear from somebody who's actually got a beautiful classic like this and really uses it? Norman, it's actually been fantastic speaking to you and hearing about your exciting car. Thank you so much. No, thank you for your time. So Peter, the Gay Classic Car Group, mm -hmm. why was it felt necessary to set this up? I think Ian felt that, that Ian being the original chairman, he recognised there was a need for a fellowship organisation to do car activities together, uh, you know, drop country drive, visit country houses, picnics, all those sort of things, because there was nothing at the time. And I think he also recognised that the, the, the community needed fellowship activities, so he set it up. And it was, it was quite small for many years, and it's steadily the last, yet again, about probably the last 10, probably a bit longer, the, the club has grown quite rapidly. When you turn up to events like this, What's the reaction that you get? In recent years, it's getting steadily better, but it's in more and more positive reaction. I mean, certainly over the last five years, you get very, you get very little pushback indeed. Um, probably go back 10 years, it'd be a different story again. So, you know, everything is getting much more accepting and more fitting, basically, and people, people come to one another. So it's becoming more collective all the time. So my personal interest with the club is to get it slightly more sporty. So doing track days, race days, and things like that, because it's my background. But the actual base of uh, the club is very much about enjoying our cars, discussing them, looking after them and doing things together. Yeah, like you said, there's quite an eclectic mix of cars yes, here. Yes. One thing that you said that is very interesting, it's all about identity. And I'm the brown car guy and I'm very much about identity. People are like, what's that all about? I'm like, well, I'm brown and I'm a car guy, so it's <laughs> fairly obvious. Is that an important aspect of what you think the club is all about? I mean, coming back to the fellowship thing, the fact that, you know, it is a certain, you know, it's a gay classic car club. It is a way of drawing people in, basically, at the moment because they feel that they'll have somewhere to go where they'll be comfortable uh, and also share their interest, which is an important part of the process, I think, really. I think this is a fantastic initiative. I think it's fantastic what you guys are doing. All power to you. I might open a brown car guy club. What do you reckon? <laughs> Give it a go. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Peter. Know. Good to meet you. Now, I normally see Dave Webster in Greenwich, and we're in Bicester in Oxfordshire, and I've come across Dave again, but I'm very happy to because Dave, Dave Webster, is the founder of the MOT Club. MOT stands for? Mean Old Timers. Our club, actually, we have like probably nearly 200 members and it's really varied. You know, it could be from a Morris Minor to a sort of 1920s Alfa Romeo. It doesn't matter if it's rusty, concours, yeah. you know, whatever. So we're very welcoming to anyone. And that's where I met you. It's, it's a community-based Event. It is, but so, we love old cars as well. We love old you cars. You need to tell me about this beautiful oh, Ford Zephyr we've got here. Uh, well, this is uh, 1959. Yeah. Ford Zephyr Mark II. Uh, as you can see from the sticker, it's been in Switzerland. I've driven it to Antibes in the south of France via the Swiss Alps. Never missed a beat. Used a bit of oil. So I don't know. I've had it about seven years. Original colour. Yeah, the original full colour. I don't know what it's called, but it's kind of an orangey red. Right, right. <laughs> uh, goes really well. We've driven up this morning from South London, through London to Oxford. And that's the thing about classic cars. Quite a few people I've seen here. I see them all over the country. Wherever we go, we're all sort of friends, comrades, and we'll have a great time. So I can honestly say I'm the only young member of the mean old timers. <laughs> Who doesn't love a Triumph Stag? You know, they're like muscle cars. They have powerful engines. Ooh, this one's a little bit different. Why is it plugged in? Well, I've got Steve here from Electrogenics that can tell me what is different about this Triumph Stag. What is different about this Triumph Stag is it's 100% electric. Oh my God, isn't that sacrilege? No. <laughs> and what it means is that it starts first time. It gets you to where you want to go. It's smooth, silent, beautiful. You can appreciate the joys of the British countryside and uh, when you get home, plug it in and in the morning you're ready to go again. And what sort of range would you get after you plugged it in overnight? 
Well, it depends how many batteries you put in, but this one's about 180, 200 miles. That's pretty good. I notice also it's got a manual gearbox. I thought electric cars couldn't do that. Electric cars don't do that for if it's a production vehicle for a number of reasons, but we do because it's more fun. And when you say we, Electrogenic, who are you and what do you do exactly? So Electrogenic, um, what we're all about is making clean, green, beautiful, classic machines for the 21st century. So we convert classic cars into all electric. That's what we do. Okay, so final pitch to our audience. Why should they convert their car, classic car, to electric? It's clean, it's green, you can drive into and out of London next year. It's economical, it's fun, and if you specify it right, it's a lot faster. Thanks very much, Steve. Thank you. Right, so I knew that I would find something really special. Shazad's been looking at muscle cars, but I wanted a real thoroughbred, and I think I've found the plum car. It's at the Square Wheels Car Club, and I am with Secretary Doug Squires, and he's hiding the most beautiful and valuable car at the show today, I am sure. Doug, tell us about this car. It's a 1960 short wheelbase 250GT. Right. And it's one of only 12. It's right, well, say only 12, 12 with right hand drive and the car is quite unique. So uh, we're very privileged to have it here today. It's given a hard life. Yes. It, looks, it looks good and it is. So it's not just used as a show car? No, then? not at all. It's right. campaigned very hard. Right. Uh, John Goodwin, the owner, he's a member of the Ferrari Owners Club. He knows how to use it. It's driven at a pace. It's rare to see a Ferrari, especially one like this, that's actually used in the way Doug actually is, is saying, which is really what Enzo Ferrari wanted with his cars, very wasn't much it? So, yeah. Well, this 3 litre V12, you know, he's certainly got it right and the handling of it is absolutely immense. Because I know that this car has probably got to be the most expensive car here. Doug, how much do you think this car's worth? It's worth an eye watering, mouth watering, jaw dropping 12.3 million. Yes, yes, <laughs> I Worth knew it. Worth saving up for. <laughs> I have found the plum car, yeah. 12.3 million Shazad beat that. It doesn't sound a lot if you say it quickly. So there you are Shazad, top this, Ferrari 250 GT, short wheelbase, 12.3 million. To me this has got to be the plum car of the show. I don't think any of your muscle cars can beat this and now I'm a happy man, yeah. That might be the most expensive car at the show, Kevin, but I'd be afraid to stand near it, never mind drive it. It's so valuable. I'm also afraid of Vipers, especially the mad ones with V10 engines. But I love them, really, as I told Mark Kidman, the UK president of the Dodge Viper Owners Association. We got her here on the stand today with the most uh, Vipers uh, that we've seen uh, with the UK Viper Club in 15 years. So together at one all point? To, all together oh, at one awesome. point. So that's How many in cool. the club? We've only got 20 members and five, oh, right. of, and five of those are European. So 75% of them are here? 75% of the club are here today. <laughs> what a fantastic day to be out and about though, isn't it? It is, it is. Yeah, the weather's great. So you're right, pleasure. So, I, lo I love the fact that you are really open to letting people have a look at the car and sit in the car and just learn uh, about the, it. The, the whole point of the club is about sharing the passion and to encourage membership. We've got a great website where um, on the forums there's loads of how-to guides and everything because lots of the parts now as these are getting older are becoming discontinued. Yeah, but yeah. But there's a good aftermarket parts base out there How to keep the cars the, running. How many in the UK are there? How many Vipers would there be in the UK? Well, we think there's probably around 30 that, yeah. that, we, that, that we know of. Right, right. Um, a few of them over the years have been uh, exported to uh, Europe. In the early years, the European ones, they were Chrysler Vipers. Chrysler Viper Absolutely. and then later and they just call them vipers. Okay, final question. Do you go shopping in it? No, but I've done the occasional <laughs> school run. Oh, uh, Sam, yeah. you are officially the <laughs> coolest dad in the school by far. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks so much for talking to us. Mark. That's all right. That's, That's a awesome. pleasure. That's a pleasure. Hey, hey. What do you think? What an awesome show. There's it was something, good. It's fantastic. There's it something good. here for everybody. I said I was going to go search for muscle cars and I found them. Vipers, Mustangs, you name it. Brilliant. In this September weather, would you believe? Now, we were looking for different things because you went for the muscle cars, I went for the thoroughbreds, but I found some great cars. And I could have spent the whole morning and the afternoon on that side while you were on this side. So there's something for everybody. 
Shall we come next year? Oh, definitely. I'll tell you what, this is the first one of these events. I'm sure that they'll be back next year and I'm already booking my slot because I'm definitely coming back to this. With stuff like this to see, why wouldn't you? Yeah, exactly. The only thing is we walk away in separate directions because he's going to do the muscle cars and again, I'm going to do the thoroughbreds. There's time left in the day. I'm all right with that. I'll Take see care. you here next year. See you again.